Hey there and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm the Garage Guy. I'll be talking today about setting up your extrusion with so you can get fine detail on really thin pieces. I discovered this on accident. It led to some more curiosity and then I figured out how to uh, calibrate my extrusion width so I can get really precise prints and I can adjust the extrusion width based on the project without having to adjust anything else because I know that when I set the printer to print it's going to give me the exact width that the slicer thinks it is and those two will match and just yield a, a better output so come along I'm garage guy I, I hope that you enjoy alright so I got to producing part of the video and then I realized that maybe it's important before you invest a lot of time that you see the tools I'm using this is a cheap thickness gauge off Amazon when I bought it, it was probably 10 to 15 bucks I'd rather use Midatoyo or however it's pronounced tools I have a Midatoyo calipers they work great they're not here with me you're going to need a thickness gauge or some digital calipers to measure these thicknesses so you can really uh, get a tight uh, read and you're going to do an average probably and just to give you a demonstration if you've never seen a thickness gauge before it works just like this there you go and you can zero it out and all that other fun stuff yeah you're going to need one of these and um, hopefully I'll have an affiliate link to this product the Mito Toyos I think you should buy the Mito Toyos are $100 price of a printer in some cases so we'll have a cheap option and uh, the luxury option but if you're a serious 3d printer or you're serious with just measuring stuff it's not a bad investment to get the higher end item this is why I don't trust Chinese calipers and I don't trust Chinese um, measuring devices you could see a, a little gap right here that's not an optical illusion um, I could see it with my eyes but it was really hard to capture on camera this is just something to keep in mind. If you're going to be measuring, you might as well just skip the cheap Chinese stuff and get the good stuff. Alright guys, for our next one, we're going to design the part in SolidWorks real quick. And just to give you an idea of what you should be designing or using a, as a measuring tool, I'll put this on Thingiverse or on my website, or you'll, you'll be able to get the STL for yourself. So it's going to be a vase mode print, followed up by the settings in Simplify 3D, I think that's about it for that section. So design to print, set up the settings for Simplify 3D. We're going to go into uh, the settings. We're going to print a model, measure it, and then change the settings on the printer if we need to. And there's going to be a uh, math equation at the end of that. So here we go. Now here we are in SolidWorks. And um, this is a real awesome software for designing. It's a competitor to Fusion 360. Here's the part in Simplify 3D, and we're going to go to Edit Process Settings. And I'm using a 6 0.60 nozzle uh, with an E3D V6 hot end. I am using a 0.7. This is already settings that I had. Now, the next thing is finding out which extrusion width works best with the filament and nozzle setup. And I found that 0 0.70 was that um, number. Another setting that we're going to want to change, we're going to have some bottom sod layers, about five, and we're going to have low layer heights. Um, and I think that's pretty critical to getting the right thickness calibrated in. Once you calibrate it once, you can use any height, I would think, because then it's uh, matching the equations and the math and everything at any height. So I don't want to get into all that mumbo jumbo. We're going to use 0 0.10. If you're a stickler for printing at a certain height, then by all means change it to that height base your calibrations off that here we have the print already sliced and if you noticed which I just noticed something's not right oh here it is it is right we have our wall thickness and the reason in SolidWorks that I designed it with filleted edges we don't want a hard stop we want the extrusion to smoothly pass without having hard stops or motors you know stopping and going so I've designed it in that way okay guys so it's been about three days since I made that video getting the software part ready and explaining the tool I thought I was gonna whip this video up and have an instructional guide and it was all gonna be hunky-dory and I was gonna be done well making YouTube videos is a pain in the ass and I have a lot of respect for the people who put out content after trying to do it myself this is including some decent gear I mean I'm not exactly using a cell phone so uh, bear with me guys and, and if you like what I'm producing, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button, leave a comment. 
Now on top of that, 3D print videos, I noticed there's not as much content for 3D printing. A lot of that has to do with um, the difficulty of printing, making videos about 3D printing because like in this scenario, we're gonna discuss this, I'm gonna uh, have some zoom in shots. This didn't go out as, as well as I thought it was gonna be. Um, that PLA was a pain in the ass to print with this um, vase print. It turns out I was printing too hot, but I went through a few troubleshooting steps, and we're going to go into those. Getting zoom in shots of the layer lines, because I'm a real stickler for like really nice layers, as nice as you can get the layers. So I'm going to use a, um, we're going to analyze photos instead of try to get video. You can see here where I broke a piece apart right there. I like tearing apart my calibration stuff to just to see, just to see how strong it is. And um, you can see right here, there's some layer lines. I don't know if you can get them in the, the focus is gonna chop out my finger. But there's layer lines, or what's called Z wobble as we go up the tower. So that's pretty typical of uh, the the lead screws and the Lulzbot and other printers that use this this type of, I think they're called IGUS or whatevers. Um, so we're gonna go into a little bit of that, talk about how uh, Z wobble influences your layer thickness with your uh, extrusion width. Sorry, I get tongue tied with all these terms. And yeah, so let's get started. Now my first print, as you can see right here, it didn't really come out so hot. I printed this, came back, and I was shocked at how terrible it looked. And usually PLA is pretty easy to print with. So I thought that the PLA had moisture in it. So I switched to a different uh, brand new roll. Now this is cheap Chinese material. You know, I, I'm not sure if quality PLA wouldn't uh, would hold a higher temperature or not. But uh, let's go take a look with uh, a close up, and you can really see what happens when you print too hot. And you should keep an eye out for this on your own prints. Um, well, with PLA, this is what happens, and we could just turn the blacks down, and you can really see a lot of detail there. And then if we zoom in closer here. Um, to really get a look at it so what happens is I think when you're laying down a hot layer of PLA um, it melts the layer that was freshly put on you have to remember you also laid down that layer at a higher temperature so it hasn't had time to cool down as you know when you're 20 degrees difference so it kind of wants to stick to the nozzle a little more and then drag the bottom layer so you actually detach the layer that you just put on and we could see that here very clearly can even see the voids. I mean, there's genuine voids. So, uh, in a 3D print community, we like to say hotter is better. In my experience, that has not been true. Um, layer adhesion and heat um, do not necessarily run parallel. If anything, in my experience, heat and layer adhesion, you create more uh, separation with uh, higher temps. And we'll see another print printed at a better temperature next. Now this is my second attempt and um, I opened up a brand new roll of PLA and I got better results but then it started and I don't have a picture of that uh, the rest of the tower because it started doing the same thing. So it got really weird as it got higher off the heated plate it started to um, just looked more deformed um, like the other print. So I tore that off manually with my hands to get a measurement. And then I wanted to show off Z wobble and how it influences your layer thickness. So um, this thing's about the size of a quarter, probably a little smaller maybe. Maybe it's equal to a quarter. Um, use my, my eye as a, a reference. Man, I, I feel like weird. I ate a lot of pizza last night, and it's like all making me burp and um, all weird. But anyways, so we got layer layer heights right here. or uh, I keep calling them layer lines. Z-wobble, it's very, very mild. I mean, almost unnoticeable. And if you printed like a, a Benchy or something, you probably wouldn't even notice it. But when you're doing engineering-type prints, that stuff's noticeable. So this is a little bit of Z-wobble. And I printed faster this one so it's just something to keep in mind um, I'm not going to use this one to measure either I got two pieces they look really good but 
they do have very mild Z wobble. I mean, maybe I'm nitpicking. And this is the final print that we're going to base the measurement off of. And it's important to note, I, I print these long so I can uh, diagnose other issues with the printer. I think a long um, tower is the best way to do that. Um, and we can see right here, something happened. So we got really smooth. I, I printed this really slow. We got really smooth um, vase print up to right here. And then it develops uh, Z-wobble or a, a noticeable uh, thread lead screw pattern. That is because the filament probably got snagged. This is cheap filament. It's not really wound very well. So I think it hit like a snag and when that snag got undone, um, it still had tension. And because there's tension on the, the tool head, it wants to push against one of the lead screws and starts putting the pattern back in. So you can combat Z-wobble in some cases by printing slower. And that's what I've done. I've taken a lot of the over-constraint bearings out of the lead screws, and that has improved it because it used to look way worse. But it's just something to keep in mind when you're trying to get precision like we're about to do. We want perfect prints to perfect extrusion widths to measure off of, and we got one right here. So you're going to break apart your calibration uh, tower, and we're going to take the measurements here. All right, guys, as you can see, I already started to disassemble this. Um, I just use an X-Acto knife. We're not going to use the top part of this. It has a lot of Z-wobble. We're going to cut right here. We're going to be a little... <coughs> and I got a cough. I'm sorry. We're going to be a little conservative on this. And we're just going to get this piece off right here. And this is where we're going to take our measurements from. Something else I like to do is I like to cut it out. So we're going to make a cut. And we got four edges to measure. Here's a cheap, uh, I, I kind of want to do a video, cheap versus expensive um, calipers. And here's my mid Otuyos that I got out uh, just for this. Um, but we're going to use this. And this is, I like this because it puts an even pressure. And that's what the video is really about. We could take a look right here. Does that show up? 0.72. 0 0.75, 0 0.75 again, and 0.77. And I like to do it like this. Let me cough real quick. <coughs> I like to do it like this because I just want the spring to put the same amount of pressure inside here um, on the, uh, the 3D print. So I, I get my four cuts. And I like to lay them out all nice. And you can also go about it like this. You can go about it like this. And this works, but look, see, you got 0.82 because you're you're just getting so much uh, bite on it. Um, you get like a uh, off measurement. This this is more accurate than. This is more accurate than this, but this grabs less meat. So that's why I think you should use it. I can also take this part that didn't come out right. I'll take just one quick measurement. 0.68, so it's a lot different when the uh, printer's having a problem. So if you remember at the start of the video, we targeted 0 0.70 as an extrusion width, and we got 0.75 as our average. And the reason we do an average is because usually all four sidewalls are different thicknesses. So we, what we want to do is bring the 0.75 down to 0 0.0. There's three ways to do that. We can adjust the E steps, which basically is a calibration of of how many steps it takes to extrude 100 millimeters of filament. And you should do that prior to doing this if you haven't done it. Um, it could make it easier to get this dialed in. The second step is to adjust the extrusion multiplier. And the third step is to either do the extru extrusion multiplier or adjust E-steps uh, trial and error until you get it right. 
We're going to do the mathematic way, and that'll bring us pretty close, and you can repeat the process as many times as you want. By the time you finish this, you should understand the basic gist of it, and maybe employ your own st strategy to calibrate the extrusion width. You can see on my printer that the E-steps, there's an E-steps calibration directly on the printer. For some of you, this is going to be hard baked in, so you would adjust the extrusion multiplier. Um, that's pretty easy, and I won't go into the math of that, but you could probably figure it out after watching this. So we just observed 760 steps produces a width of 0.75. So all we have to do is take 75, we're going to lose the decimal, and divide by 760. I meant to say divide 760 by 75. If you do the math, you get 10.33. That means for every 0 0.01 of growth or shrinkage, you'd want to reduce the steps by 10.33. This number should equal 51.65. We're going to reduce the amount of steps by 51.65, or we're just going to round up to 52 to get our calibration width that we are targeting to match the amount of steps the printer uses. So here's me reducing the amount of steps in the uh, and this is how you save it on this printer. This part I can't help you guys with. It's going to be different for each and every model. And there you have it. I just went through and showed you how to calibrate your extrusion width. You can run it again and dial it in uh, tighter. Um, I've done that where I've printed four or five and got it really, really nice. Well, there you have it. How to calibrate your extrusion width using calipers or a thickness gauge is what I prefer. By no means this is a comprehensive list. There's a lot of ways to do this, but now that you're aware of it, you can really help dial in your prints even further than you already have. Like and subscribe. Making videos is a pain in the ass. It's expensive. It's time consuming. Um, I'm not looking for any charity right now or anything like that other than to know that you appreciate the video. So like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you see somebody else asking questions and I'm not able to answer, answer the question uh, for them. My next videos, I'm going to uh, print hooks and see if my truck can destroy them or uh, two hooks together of different materials and which one will give first. also want to show you how to make your own LED garage lights and other projects that are going to be a lot of fun. My channel, I emphasize making projects that anybody can do, so I try not to get into things that are too technical or too weird. And not to say it's weird, it's just maybe not for most people. I try to make things that you can do yourself with your own 3D printer, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm the Garage Guy. I might change my name. This is my first mu uh, music video, YouTube video. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day, guys. Bye.